Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. It always warms my heart when I hear my fur babies, Chelsea, Connor, Carl, and Clark W. Griswold. And thank you to CC Animal Health for uh, putting on this great content. And I love these educational series. I'll tell you one thing, my friends. I am pet parent obsessed. I am obsessed with you all because I'm one of you. <laughs> I'm one of you and I love talking about this content. So this is very interactive, by the way. So you better get your fingers ready too, because I want to know where are you tuning in from? Comment in below, comment in that chat box too, as we facilitate and chat going forward, because we're going to be doing some fun things throughout. Okay. So let's get to it. We got a lot to chat about because obesity is a big thing in veterinary medicine. It's a big thing. And we know it as pet parents, whether we like to hear it or not, we know that it's a problem. And so here are some crazy statistics that you may or may not know that in 2019, an estimated 60% of cats and 56% of dogs in the United States were overweight or obese. Now, I'm going to say that one more time, because that is a statistic that is definitely worth mentioning one more time. So um, you only see the, you know, oh, the Q&A box. You can use the Q&A box here. Yeah, that's where you're putting it. So use the Q&A box right here. And so I see you. Um, comment down below where you're tuning in from. We're going to give you a shout out. And then what are the names of your fur babies? What kind of animals you have? Utilize that chat box as we're talking about it too. Olympia, Washington, we have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ann, for joining us. So listen to this. 50% of dogs in the United States were considered overweight or obese. That's more than half more than half my friends. So, you know, it's it's a little bit of a problem, you know, and obesity is certainly a disease too. So not so fun fact that 90% of pet parents with overweight pets don't realize it. They don't realize it. Maybe we, we think that they look, that's what the breed standard is. Or when we rescued our fur baby, that's how they should look. We live in a society where food is love. I just, I get it. You know, I have four dachshunds. And if you know a dachshund, I'll tell you this. They got one heck of an appetite on them. So they give you that look and you know, but 90%. So what does that mean? We have to do our work. We as both a pet parent and me as a veterinarian, we have to have common grounds. So that way we can work together in identifying something as important as obesity. Utilize that chat box there in the Q&A comments there. Do you think you can say a yes or no? And be honest, before we move forward, do you think your pet is overweight or obese. And if you don't know the difference between the two, that's okay. We're going to talk about that. But let's find out now. Use the chat, the QA box. Let's see. Do you think your pet is overweight or obese too? So, Ashley from Indianapolis, I have two English Bulldogs. I love it. One Frenchie, Penny, Lola, and Greta. Well, shout out to you. We hope you're all tuning in. Thanks for joining us. Pamela says, Atlanta, Georgia here. My best bud is my two year, uh, my long haired German Shepherd dog, Rama, or Rama, two years old, and so loving. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that too. Christy says, yes. So she has a fur baby that might be overweight and obese. And it's good to recognize those things too. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. It's so important. So, you know, let's, let's chat a little bit more about some of the data that we see here. So we know that obesity is a big thing. 56 million cats and, um, and 50 million dogs are, are have this issue. And, you know, now we're living in like the curbside check-in thing. And sometimes it's one of those things, those discussions, like we as veterinarians, uh, we tend to my, maybe dismiss it because there's other more pressing matters that we have to talk about, preventative care, heartworm prevention, vaccines, um, blood work, all those different things. And sometimes we as veterinarians fail to uh, deliver the message of urgency in the exam room because you can walk out of there and I can interview you afterwards and say, did the veterinarian or veterinary technician talk to you about diet or weight management? And you're like, no. So you would just continue to go on doing your thing because maybe you don't think that it's a big deal. So, you know, 80% of veterinary professionals have tried to help their pet lose weight. So this seems about right. So more veterinary professionals and less pet owners, right? Because it's challenging. We get it. I know 68%. So more than half of pet parents strike. So I give that a, a good round of applause on that. See what I did there? A pause. We got to have fun here. Cats to be kidding me. I love it. Okay. So methods to help pets lose weight. So these are some of their traditional methods that we know. 68% have said, oh, doc, I've tried cutting back. So utilize the Q&A box. Do you, ha, were you one of those pet parents? Do you cut back? <laughs> I know I use my air quotes here that you can see. Um, have you increased in exercise? 29% try a low calorie or low fat 
food. And this is what's really surprising to me, my friends, is that 19, that's a very low number, 19% are utilizing a prescription weight loss diet. Okay, 19 is low number. So you know, why is that? Well, one of it is probably expense. And two is probably a lack of recommendations on our part, our part, meaning the veterinary professionals, or you may just take that prescription, throw it in the trash and be like, you know what, I'm going to try other modalities and see if that works. So there is a, a whole bunch. So we tried the veterinary clinic, there's recommendations that you get from the internet. You hear it from your friends. You hear from the pet store when you're going to get squeaky toys for your fur babies, like all those different things. Well, what do we know that works that's effective? Well, if we had like a magic like pill that would work, we would, but it really is a multimodal approach to it. And it's being full transparency to the veterinary professional. I'm going to say that again, full transparency. I want you to tell me, Dr. Christman, I don't think I can do this. Like I have a hard time uh, switching foods over, or I might, I have my grandparents over them. My kids love to give them things that drop from the table. Like tell us those discussions because we just don't know, you know? So let's pivot a little bit and chat about the pandemic. Comment down below or comment in the chat box that you see in the Q&A box. Do you, have you noticed you or your family members giving your fur kids a little bit more something, something? I mean, sidebar, where would we have been if it wasn't for them? Where would we have been? The reason why I'm sharing this with you, because you are not alone. I'm with you too. As long as many other pet parents are in the same boat with us, we love them. They have helped us get through depression, sadness, COVID, other serious issues. And so what have we done? Maybe we rewarded them as giving them some food. But listen, our country and our world got hammered with a pandemic that we have never seen in our lifetimes. Some of us have been very sick, so we couldn't exercise the animals, or they got transferred to other people to take care of them. Maybe their dietary restrictions changed because we felt guilty. Only natural to feel these way. So we have these transparent conversations nowadays in these exam rooms because, again, the pandemic has really changed the way in which we treat and talk about um, obesity. Carrie says, yep, yeah, one of my fur babies is overweight. Her birth says her blood work shows her metabolism is not great. It's been a struggle. So thank you, Carrie. And it's a great point too. Always, always, always get blood work too, because there can be a metabolic panel that you can run to see if there's things that are, you know, missing or whatnot. Of course, we think of hypothyroidism as a big issue. So always want to rule those things out because you want to treat the underlying cause of excessive weight gain. It could be hyperadrenal cortisism, also known as Cushing's disease that some dogs can get too. So yeah, so thank you so much for sharing that, Carrie. So yeah, so we know about these things. So this is like a big issue that we see in the pet parent. So where are we? All, we are all over the place when we're talking about diets and weight management. We really are. And during the pandemic, because again, diets, diets have changed. Finances have been limited. There have been recalls. There's been back orders. So we know this in this profession. And then the opposite, the opposite too, so much walking. With COVID or quarantine, some people were out of jobs, so they walked and exercised the animals so much, where I'm not kidding, and I never thought I would see this as a veterinarian practicing, that I saw underweight animals, I did see underweight dogs, not a lot, but a few, because of excessive exercises, as if the dog was trying to tell me in the exam room, help me, Dr. Christmas, I, I won't stop going for walks with my parents, but you know, we talked about increasing the dietary requirements and so forth. But then we talked about sick pet parents. And then how about this? Do you have one of those COVID puppies that they talk about or COVID cats, like a surge in pet adoption? So during COVID, we wanted and yearned that sense of belonging, that feeling of, you know, just the human animal bond. I say this to my students. I say to children, no one should be deprived of the human animal bond. I don't care if it's a hamster, a goat, a dog or cat. Everyone should have one because it's that unconditional love. So we know. And then the quarantine diets. I mean, let's call it what it is. I mean, I feel like I did too. We all gained a little bit and we're still trying to have a hard time to take some of the pounds off of us, right? So we you know there, we're all over the place with it. So we understand. The bottom line, we understand. We understand. We are not here to judge anyone. <laughs> we are dealing with the circumstances that are presenting to us with either genetics, predispositions, the pandemic. So this is another level of how we go about treating things. Now, I want you to comment in the Q&A box. Give me a, a Y for yes and N for no. If you heard of something called the body condition score, have you heard of this? Comment in the chat, the Q&A box. A Y for yes and N for no. Let's see what we got here. Let's see who, who we got. 
Okay, so Pamela says no, Anne says yes, Jennifer says yes, Ashley says yes, Cash says yes. So that's good. So that's it's good to know. Carol says no. So yeah, and that's okay. Well, let me go back. Hold on. That's okay because that's what we're going to chat about because there are two different types of body condition scores that are out there. Okay. This one is my personal favorite. If you want to take a screenshot of this, you could. This is by Hills and this is a scale of one through five. And so now I was just, I literally was just interviewing a board certified um, nutritionist yesterday and she gave me a great example. So I want you all to take your hand up like this as if I could see you were in, like we're in Rumper Room or we're at like uh, the Cub Scouts. We're going to take an oath. I want you to feel the back of your hand, okay? What do you feel? Comment in the chat box, what do you feel? Feel the back of your hand right here. If you can see my hand, what do you feel? You feel the bones. Is it bony? Are your hands bony? No, but you should, you're feeling the bones, but not necessarily seeing them. That's a normal body condition score, okay? That's a normal body condition. So that's a three. Now I want you to take your palm and I want you to feel the inside of your palm. Can you feel the bones? Can you feel the bones? You can't, you can't feel the bones. So that's like a four or five, okay? Yeah, so Carol says I can feel the bones. So, so this just gives you an idea. This is a great tool that we use as veterinarians where you use your hand because there's a difference between feeling the dorsal, the top part of the hand. So you can be able to feel the ribs, but not see them. So when you're rubbing your hands over your dog or your cat, you should be able to feel the ribs, but not see them. Similar to how you feel like the back of your hand. Now, on, when you flip it over on the palm, you can't really feel the bones, right? So that's more of a four or five. So that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about a body condition score. So you're looking at this beautiful yellow Labrador retriever and a couple of things that that bring to your attention he has something called or she has something called an abdominal tuck see how the waist goes whoop, right up into the pelvic area right there on the bottom there i'm looking at the bottom picture well she's standing then you look over them it's something to be said where they have this hour like appearance this hour like glass beautiful figure gorgeous now i know and i know i hear this all the time and i love using the labrador retriever because sometimes they'll say Dr. Christman, she's an English lab. She's going to run wide and thick, right? There's bull, bulldog pet parents that are in the room. I'm sure you heard this too. They're going to run a little thick, you know? No. <laughs> No, you know, like I know that there's some genetics that are going against them. So we have to try to make them have an ideal body condition score. So 16 to 25% body weight. Now, two words. Here are your two words of the day overweight and obesity. So 26 to 35% body weight, body fat, and then over 35% of body fat. So some of you too have come to me and said, I think my dog is so fat and obese. I said, actually, she's overweight. And we can calculate that. There's a whole way you can go about doing that. But just from a subjective standpoint, see how like that waistline on the right hand side, there's a little bit more like of this sausage-like appearance versus that inward tuck. And then notice the abdominal tuck here. So if you look on the three versus the four, it kind of just goes a little flat. Now, we're talking about obesity. Ribs are difficult to feel under the thick fat. You have these brachycephalic breeds. What's an example of one? A pug, an English bulldog, a Japanese chins, the ones that have the pushed in faces, the one that are doing the whole, <laughs> right? These guys, we really have to keep thin because what happens when you have that obese pug? significant respiratory things. And so look, the actually there's a bulging effect that you see on the abdominal area. And then when you look on, when they're standing, they actually almost have like a pendulous-like abdomen that's there, pendulous-like abdomen. So that's a five. So that's the five. Now on the reverse side, like I was talking to you previously about some of my patients that I've seen from excessive exercise, they could see underweight. So this is a two. Now I work in shelter medicine and unfortunately I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but I do see malnourished and abused animals that come see, that come into the shelter that we take in, hoarding situations for instance, and they are at a one, you know, they're literally just skin and bones like this. So that's something that you generally don't see too often in, in practice, okay? But that it is there. But so that's the body condition score, okay? So I'm gonna pause for a moment. I want you all to take a look at your dog or your cat right now. And I want you to comment in the Q&A box right now what you think your dog and cat is. And I know some of you have a couple of animals and go for it. I want to, I'll give you a moment to take a look and see. Now you can actually do a 3.5, you do a 4.5, you can do a 2.5. So you can go in the middle if you wanted to as well. So um, let's see what you all think. Let's utilize the chat box. So Anne says ribs are three, but neck is four. Okay, so that's a great example then, Anne, 
So I would say that your fur baby is more like a 3.5. So because that, that overall, we're looking at overall body condition score. So if that neck is thick, then we do a 3.5. So it was great, great observation. Good call to you. Shout out to you. Melissa, great call. says 3.5. Kim Stofer says, I have two that are three and one that is 3.5. Excellent. And Pamela says 3.5. Ashley is all threes. So excellent. So you all have, generally speaking, a little bit, maybe a little on the thicker side, completely manageable, completely manageable. And then some of you have great ideal body condition. And what I would love is I have these up in my exam rooms too. I have these body conditions where, because I utilize it as a tool. So if you were to come in to see me or if we did a virtual visit um, and we talked virtual and I would be able to see your fur baby out, you know, in your living room, for example. And I would say, wait, hold up first. What's the BCS? What's the body condition score? And you say a four. And I say, let me see. It's like, move him, move him around a little bit. Let him just see him walk around. And I said, you know what? I'm going to see a three. And here's why. Because why is this important? This is going to have a conversation, okay? Now, there's another one that's a scale of one through nine. So you might hear this. This is from Nestle Purina. They have one through nine, one through nine. Also, um, Hills also has this too as a one through nine too. So I like the five because it's simplified, you know what I mean? But um, the nines, it, when you use the nine, by the way, too, you don't round up like a, a nine, uh, 8.5. You just use those numbers. So that's to help kind of come out the, the one through five. So I just want to keep that under your radar but can we just talk about the really plump cat on the far right so here's an interesting thing too like and i know this is a general thing especially for cats is that fat cats are adorable right i mean let's just call it what it is they're so stinking cute right but that's for us to we're enjoying them but we're not really make, taking care of them and so i hear it so often and so like if i hear the team member like oh my god look how fat this cat is she's so cute Ugh, because what is that doing? It's not, we're not addressing the underlying health. We're not doing any service to a cat that, yeah, their cats are going to be cute regardless of them. Yes, they have that little fat pad that swings in the air or whatever underneath their abdomen, but we need to really do a better job as veterinary professionals too. We're, we're just as guilty. And we want to make sure that we bring them down to an ideal body weight because again, with cats, diabetes, all those different things can be associated with it. Okay, now it's your turn. So we have a dachshund because I had to do a dachshund. Now, your turn is to tell me what the body condition score is on the dachshund on the left. So we're going to start with the one on the left first, and then we're going to work on, on the cat in a second. But comment down below in the chat box on a scale of one through five, what do you think that that dachshund's body condition score is? Mine is mine being 4.5, the other two or three, she is why I'm here. Oh, great, Cash. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us, too. So, yeah, if you're just joining us, we want to know what you think um, that we see these numbers are, are of this dachshund. So, Ann says 4.5, Cash is 5, Pamela says 4, Jennifer's 4, Melissa is 4, 4.5, Kara's 4. Yeah, very good. Excellent. You nailed it. So, this dog is technically a 4. You know, could I um, argue with you for 4.5? Probably, but I don't think um, this dog is as severe in a 4.5 because I know what a 4.5, like there's a little bit more rounded to that belliness. And then somebody was talking about the brisket of the neck. Yeah, that chest can get really thick. So very good. So that, that dog is a four. Now let's go over to the right and see what we got here on this adorable, but poor kitty. What body condition score do you think that cat is on the right? Comment in the chat box, the Q&A box there. What do you think? Is it a one, two, three, four, or five? What do you think we're at here with the, the cat? So I see ones, definitely one exclamation point one. Very good. Excellent, everybody. Yeah, this poor kitty is a one. This cat actually came to me um, emaciated, cakexic looking, anorexic. So, um, but we got a lot of great nutrition into them and they did really well too, but very good. So now you can see the difference between a one and say a four. So great job. Okay. This is a video that I have, and I do a lot of educational videos. Now, if you don't follow me on TikTok, you need to, because let's see, I'm going to try to type my answer in afterwards here, and I'm going to put my um, my username, Dr. Adam Christman, 52, on TikTok. I think I sent it to all of you, so you should be able to see it. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm on TikTok. I love educational content, as you can tell. This is my jam. I love speaking to you all. So this is something I did about, is your pet overweight or underweight? And it's not long, so take a look. Let's talk body condition score, also known as the BCS. A BCS is a subjective number from one to five, with three being normal assigned to your pet based on evaluation of fat at key locations on their body. One means severely underweight, five is obese. Let's look at this cutie. So you should be able to look over their body like this. 
this, and they should have a nice waistline and abdominal tuck that you see here. You should be able to feel the ribs, but not see them. This dog has a body condition score of a three. You're perfect. So look at Murphy. See how he's got, he's a little thin. I can see his ribs. I give him a body condition score of a 2.5. This kid has a body condition score of a three. Nice. Very nice. So what's the body condition score here? What do you think this is here? So I can see her ribs a little bit, a little thin. What number? I give her a two. What did you just score for BCS? Five. Five. Obese. One emaciated. What's your fur baby? Okay. So yeah, just a great little educational tool too. And I, I use that a lot in the exam room too, just so that way we can come to an agreement on what, what we see with body condition score. Okay, so what are some risks associated with pet obesity? Well, we know cardiovascular disease. We know that the respiratory tract is compromised, endocrine, and also osteoarthritis. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I have diagnosed OA on young, that's to say Labrador retrievers and golden retrievers because of obesity. Now we had to address the underlying problem, which was getting the weight off, but we had to put them on something to help manage that pain and inflammation. Unfortunately, they were just too young to be on it, you know, just too young. So obesity is a disease. I want you to all say this with me. One, two, three, obesity is a disease. It's not a condition. This is a disease. Why do I, why am I honing this in on you? Because you know, you think of cancer, you think of metabolic, those are all diseases. Obesity is a disease and we treat it like no other. We get a treatment plan in place, we make the diagnosis, we do follow-ups, we do rechecks. Sometimes we need to do a multimodal approach to getting that weight off because we don't want it to cascade into other things, you know? And I'm gonna say this one more time because this is really huge. Obesity is reversible. I wish I could say so many other things in veterinary medicine that are reversible and they're not, but obesity is, we can actually reverse that and then really give them that quality of life that these kids really deserve and need. So treatment plans, let's talk about it. Feed the right food. All right, everybody. There are three things that everyone's passionate about in life. Do you know what they are? Politics, religion, and pet food. <laughs> Pet food. All right. So comment in the chat box if you're willing to share. What are you feeding your fur kids? Comment in the chat box. I would like to see and be interested to know what you're feeding them. I think I lost the chat box, but I believe it should come back at some point. So what are you feeding your fur babies? I'd like to know. Um, so treatment plans is feeding the right food. Okay. Treating feeding the right food is is very important too. Okay. So and I appreciate and respect you're saying raw food. So excellent. Okay, who else do we got? So raw food diets. So, you know, if we have a dog that is on a raw food diet, and I literally just had this conversation with a board certified veterinary nutritionist yesterday, and they are obese and overweight, you can modify that raw food diet easily to make sure that the weight is off of them. Purina Pro Plan, OM plus raw food. Okay, excellent. Raw, lightly cooked balanced. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for sharing all these things. So excellent. So regardless of the food that you're feeding them, everything can be tweaked and modified accordingly. There's a great website too. There's one of them that I recommend. And this one's, it's called balanceit.com. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's a home cooked kind of a website. And that way you can put in what you're feeding. And then if you need to tweak things such as um, the carbohydrate versus the fat content um, and the fiber content, it will help direct you a little bit more. And it's done through the American College of Veterinary Nutritionists. So I'm all about Anything that you do in terms of tweaking these things is using the American College of Veterinary Nutrition too. So Carrie does nat natural balance for dog for overweight, taste of the wild ancient grains for my other dog. Uh, Cash says limited ingredient kibble. Carol says vegetables, quarter can of Bella plus some eggs. Great, thank you so much for sharing that. So you have those foods and then also we can't forget about diet exercise, okay? Now, there are prescription foods that are made available. The reason why it's a prescription food is because it is limited in the amount of calories that are required for like, say, a normal dog. So we don't want every animal to be on these things. That's what prescription foods are for. So it's limited and also has a higher content of, say, usually it's fiber is what it is. But then exercise is a huge thing. So I would like to set up my pet parents for what I call sucks yes, not sucks no. <laughs> so if I... I have a geriatric clientele, which I do, and I know that they're not going to be able to maybe walk their animals. Let's talk about it. 
Should we do hydrotherapy? Should we go to doggy daycare? Should we hire somebody to be the dog walker? Because again, I want to set you up for sex. Yes. So if you can't do it, just please tell me, you know, tell your veterinarian. That's the reason why is, listen, I'm going in to get my knee replaced next week. I'm worried. I don't think I've been able to do this. Okay. So let's set up a program together that we can make this work um, together. Okay. So here's what I say. And I like sound bites because I'm really big into this. So I know you didn't think Milo was obese today, but we are going to work together to help get the weight off of him so that he can be with us for as long as possible. We will do this. You like what I said there? Together. You're not alone in this. You're not alone. Nor do I expect you to be alone in this. We have a great team of veterinary professional. I usually employ a uh, Weight Watchers coach. It's usually a vet tech that will follow up with the program. So that's always a great thing to have, but we will do this. You need somebody to say that just like if you and I were losing weight, it's hard to do it alone. You need somebody to help get you through it. And I don't care if it's a five pound obese chihuahua that's supposed to be two pounds, like those little ounces that come off, we celebrate those wins. I need you to celebrate those wins. Like I have danced around the vet hospital. That's like, like Milo just lost three ounces. Woohoo! This is awesome because that's going to empower you as a pet parent that you're doing the right thing versus like, well, she only lost three ounces. I really want her to lose a pound. Like that's, you're going to feel defeated, right? Huge difference. So we work together, 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 together. Okay. Big thing. So here's my stairway to weight loss for sucks. Yes. <laughs> You can steal this, by the way, too. So calculate the calories utilize the recommended diet by the veterinarian. So I see a bunch of you are using the raw food diet. So work with a veterinarian, work with a board certified veterinary nutritionist that can work with you on the calories. Because again, if you think your dog is overweight or obese, you're going to have to cut back a little bit on the meat source or your protein source potentially. So a slow transition, if you have to change the food, seven to 10 days. Fun fact, I don't know if you know this, um, cats, side-by-side -side comparison for new food, dogs, transition. Did you know that? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Did you know that cats are different than dogs when it comes to new transition or transitioning them from new food? You don't do a little bit of this, a little bit of that for cats. You do side-by-side -side bowls for cats and dogs. You do a little bit of this and a little bit of that over seven to 10 days. So yeah, so then what you do is 25% increment. So you keep having those bowls side-by-side. -side. New food, you increase it. All food, you decrease it. Because you know cats, they're going to like this, flick. What is this? What's going on? Oh my gosh, my life is all over. There's two bowls here. There's only supposed to be one bowl. That's it. I'm going to pee outside the litter box for you today. <laughs> So uh, there's that. So increase exercise with 15 minutes. So comment down below, comment in your chat box. What are some exercises that you think work great to get some of the pounds off uh, for your dog and for your cat? Yes, you can exercise. What are some things that you think work good? Um, you're all pet parents out there. So we're all going to learn from one another. It's just me that has the me on camera. Me with the, so good to know. Right. So what are some things that you recommend? One thing that I recommend is having a dachshund. I can tell you a lot of them have, have suffered from intervertebral disc disease is hydrotherapy. Now I know it can be costly, but if you have, we have severely obese and overweight um, uh, pets, putting them in the, the hydro tank in a tank, it just fills up to their chest. They have that buoyancy and they can use um, a treadmill to do their business. Because when you have severely obese dogs, they're not going to go for their walks. I, and I'm not, I cannot begin to tell you, I have had dachshunds because I see a lot of dachshunds. Um, that literally you can, you can, I had to pick up from the exam room to their car because that whole work just stressed them out. So, you know, you have to start somewhere. And even if it's passive range of motion exercises too. So Jen says, make them run after search for treats. I love that one too. Thank you for that. Wand and laser toys for my cats to chase after. Yes, absolutely. Enrichment toys are huge. My friend, Dr. Liz Bales, you can look her up too. She has something called um, the it's a it's a feeder. So it's called the, the hunting feeding system. So cats are notorious for knowing to hunt for their food. So it's uh, it's available on Target and DocMphoebe.com. And there's these little mice. You fill them up with whatever it is you want in there. But they can go around the house. They flick. They work. They hunt. They pounce on it. And especially works great for overweight or obese cats. It's a little sliding system. They're artificial mice is what it is. It's a plasticky thing. But it doesn't hurt like, like when you step on a Lego. And you put them in there and they're actually working. So great point for cats. Playing ball inside the house, Carol says. Uh, tug, tug cavalettis. 
Oh, and that sounds fancy. That sounds like that should be something on my salad. Um, Baquette says swimming works well for my half pug. I also do more shorter walks during the day, not just for a long one. Excellent. Very good. And of course, when it's heat dependent, and if it's sunny out, all those different things, you don't want them, you know, uh, getting overly um, exerted, especially our pushed in face breeds like the French Bulldogs and so forth. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. So exercise is a big thing. So what's an acceptable weight loss amount? I get asked this all the time. So for dogs, this is one to 2% of their total body weight. I want you to take a screenshot of this or take a picture of this, because this is a really good thing to file away, especially that we're chatting about this, I think it's great. So you want them to, to be on something one to 2% of their body weight. For cats is 0.5 to 2% of the body weight per week. So for example, if you have a 100 pound Labrador retriever, he can safely lose one to two pounds per week. Okay, so it's a good kind of thing to, to know. Carrie says, we love to walk and hike. The girls all love their new smells. I love that. Yeah, it gives them engagement. I'm all about the E word, engagement. Because listen, you know, I have multiple dogs, patients of mine that are coming in that are on like arthritis. And I try to do a multimodal approach. And I have it right here, of course. Here's the ACC loop. If you don't know, you need to get one of these things because it's great. I suffer from chronic migraines, total side note. And um, I put this on my head, actually, like this. I know I look ridiculous, but it really does work. Got to give a shout out to Dr. Tim Crow for telling me about this because it does work. Um, but this is great, too. If you don't know more about it, you should ask your CC person about it because um, if animals have, we're trying to get the inflammation off of them. And if I don't want them to be on, say, a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, and I know if I could kind of reverse some of that weight off of them, I'll do a multimodal approach. I'll throw them on the CC loop, and then I'll do this. So you know, something to look into for my fellow pet parents out there too, because again, natural and safe too. How many of you measure your pet's food? Use the, the Q&A box. How many, and now be honest, okay? Now listen, I'm getting off my chair for this and I'm looking at you right here. Be honest. Are you measuring your pet's food? Are you using like a measuring cup or are you using like a coffee mug? Like yes or no, are you measuring? Kim says, absolutely. Yvonne says, yeah, good, you should. A great way to do is just, you know, get the measuring cups that you use for baking, you know, the uh, cups, half a cups, not the ones that you see in front of you here, because that way you're dumping them out. Because what I want you to do is level them. Everybody type in the word level for me, L-E-V-E-L. -E -E this is your homework assignment, everyone. Do it. Type the word level in the chat box for me right now. Level. Thank you, Anne. Level, level, level. We're not doing a heaping. <laughs> We're gonna level. Thank you, Cash, Melissa, and Jennifer. Yes, we are gonna level this out. Thank you, Carrie and Carol. Level, level, level. Teach your kids this. This is a great te a teachable moment for children to learn how to be selfless and take care of others and showing them this is what it looks like. This is a half a cup of food that she's gonna get. And whatever that is too, it may not be kibble. It may be whatever you're using for your raw food and you certainly have to use a different amount. So either you're weighing or you're measuring and leveling things out. Okay, so really important. Um, there's a great research and information from vet nutrition at Tufts University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Some great, uh, this, they have a fantastic, they're known internationally for, uh, they're kind of like the Mecca for nutrition. And so uh, there's great resources that are on there that I, I welcome you to, to chat. How often should I feed my pet? In other words, if you have a, a free roamer, like a grazer versus like they scarf their food down in one sitting, um, you know, different dietary needs, you know, like our senior pets require difference than our adult pets. So when they're obese and overweight, we gotta be careful and mindful of those things too. And then looking at labels and pet foods too, of, of commercial as well as home cooked and raw diets. So like some great guidance that's along the way for you all too. I mentioned briefly about balanceit.com and this is what it looks like. I took a screen grab of what it looks like. You have the ability to go on there. Now this is, again, this is something that you would pay for, but I, I there's other tools and modalities that are out there. But you know, those of you that it seems like many of you on this call right now do some form of this. So you can select your protein, select your carbs, oils, fats, um, and select your veggies and fruits. And it'll work together to make it um, appealing. And then also, if they're overweight or obese, that's how we know what to be restricting. It'll calculate it all out. You put the dogs or cats weight in. It tells you what their ideal weight should be. And this is how you modify it. So pretty cool stuff is out there now, too. So my final thoughts is that, remember, obesity is a disease. Treat it like one. Obesity is reversible. I want to be, I want you all to be set up for success, not for failure. Okay. So 
not for a failure. Digital scale is essential, Yvonne. Thank you so much for that too. And empower each other. Empower the pet parent. Do not, do not, hold on, let me grab my microphone because this is another thing. Do not kibble shame, raw food shame, and fat shame animals on social media because that ship has sailed uh, years ago, okay? We're here to empower one another. We're not here to pass judgment on anybody. No one's in any place to judge. We're here to help empower and coach, you know, versus I can't believe how fat that dog is. Well, you don't know. You don't know what's going on. Maybe that, maybe it is a bad situation. They just don't know. Or maybe it is because someone is really sick and debilitating or this dog has underlying disease process. So, like I'm preaching and getting on my high horse. I know. Um, empower the pet parent and take photos because if you take photos before and after and post, that's a really, really big thing. It's a huge thing. 